Hey guys, it's Tamara. I'm back with another video this week. Thanks for joining me on my channel. And if you're new, thanks so much for being here. Before I jump into anything else, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see what videos are coming up next. Um, basically, new videos are posted Monday and Friday. Sometimes you get a bonus video on Wednesdays. Um, but for the most part, you get videos that are all about mental health. And I don't know how else to explain it other than just to say you're gonna get some interesting information. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, thanks so much for being with me this week. We're gonna jump right into childhood onset schizophrenia. Um, I think this is a topic that a lot of people are unaware of. Um, there may have been one prominent case that talked about childhood schizophrenia. Um, and it was a young lady named January on Oprah show. And that had to be back in 2015. It, it's a really old video. January's um, a lot older now. And so is her brother. So um, I'm gonna post that video with Oprah in January down in the description box if you want to go back and watch that video. But today we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what's called early onset psychosis or early onset schizophrenia. And basically that's a term for child or teen psychosis. Uh, we've been talking a lot about um, delusions and hallucinations and, and how to deal with that. And, and you know, I think it's important to fit kids in here because we, we really did talk more about adults. So the benefits for you in this video today is that you're going to learn about childhood onset schizophrenia, and you're also going to learn what the differences are between that and imaginary friends because there's a lot of clients that I have right now who are like, well, what's the difference between psychosis and imaginary friends? So we're gonna, we're gonna jump right into that, okay? So let me give you a definition of what childhood onset schizophrenia is. Childhood onset schizophrenia is the development before the age of 12 of psychotic symptoms. That can be both delusions or hallucinations. I'm going to also post the video in the description box below that I did last week about delusions so that you can catch up using that video as well if you haven't watched it. But delusions are false beliefs held to be true despite evidence to the contrary. It's like a strong conviction. Um, it's a strong and unmoving or unmoved assumption, belief. It is so ingrained that it's hard to move it, even with evidence. Um, other psychotic symptoms, hallucinations, those are all sensory experiences. So hearing things that aren't there, seeing things that aren't there, I'm gonna give you the video link to that video that I did on hallucinations. There is tactile hallucinations, gustatory. Um, there's olfactory hallucinations. And so kids typically experience uh, both delusions and hallucinations before the age of 12, when they are showing signs of early onset psychosis. Now, what has to be a necessity for the diagnosis to occur is the hallucinations and delusions. We cannot make a, del we cannot make a diagnosis before the age of, of 18 without seeing a child who demonstrates both delusions and hallucinations. We have to have those two. We also have to see what's called negative symptoms. So we have to see things like depressed affect and mood. Affect is basically your face, how you present to the world. Um, we have to see depressed mood. We also have, have to see um, uh, lack of motivation, um, unmotivated um, moods and behaviors. We also have to, have to see things like um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what the term is, disorganized behaviors and thoughts. That's what it is, disorganized behaviors and thoughts. Um, we, have to, we have to see those things. Now, when I say disorganized, I'm gonna post the, the definition over here for you. Um, disorganized thoughts and behaviors are very odd. They're peculiar. Um, they are difficult to keep up with and they don't make sense. So I'm gonna post the definition over here so that you can understand what a disorganized thought and behavior is. So we have to see these things in order to make a diagnosis of early onset psychosis. How do you know that a child is psychotic and they are not just displaying symptoms indicative of a psychotic disorder when in fact they're actually just kids with a, a major imagination? <laughs> That's the hard part. Um, the child is going to have to show 
a constellation of symptoms and behaviors. We can't just make the diagnosis based on the fact that a kid says they see and hear things and they believe that it's there. Um, we can't just make a diagnosis based on that. The diagnosis has to be um, made with wisdom. And so, you know, it, it, schizophrenia is a very stigmatizing diagnosis and to place it on children really does stigmatize their overall development. So we have to be careful in how we diagnose uh, psychosis among children. Um, so imaginary friends, what's normal, what's not normal? How do we know that it's not psychosis? Well, um, children who have an imagination can sometimes um, extend that imagination uh, far beyond what is typical. And sometimes it can frighten parents because they don't know what to think, right? Everything that child does is imaginative, it's creative. And so it kind of sends red flags and alarm bells for many parents who are unsure what they're looking at, right? For parents who have kids who have imaginary friends um, all the way up until adolescence are even more terrified uh, because they don't know um, they don't know what's going on. Why would someone 12 and older want an imaginary friend? Um, so let me give you some ideas as to what um, happens with these types of cases. Uh, most psychologists um, like to err on the side of caution. So they don't diagnose psychosis right then and there. They tr When a parent comes in and says, hey, my kid's psychotic, they really do try to wait it out, run tests, um, observe behavior, um, implement therapy, implement a crisis team, implement a treatment team, um, just to make sure that other things are not being overlooked, such as an autism spectrum disorder, such as um, a strong personality with attention-seeking features. Um, we try to rule out oppositional defiant disorder because sometimes kids do things just to get on everybody else's nerves. Um, <laughs> uh, we try to rule out uh, parenting styles, you know, is the parenting style causing this, this issue here? And if so, then we need to get in and we need to work with the family. It's not psychosis. Um, so psychologists try to rule out things before the diagnosis of early onset psychosis or schizophrenia is made. Children who have a, a creative and um, robust imagination can accidentally be identified as psychotic, especially by family and friends. And so it's important important to find a specialist and find somebody who can work with the child. Another thing that's often misinterpreted to be psychosis is symptoms as a result of trauma. Kids who have been traumatized, kids who have been abused, ne neglected, um, molested, um, kids who have experienced traumatic bonding, they also can show symptoms that can appear psychotic but, but are not psychotic in nature. Um, kids who have been traumatized may also um, develop imaginary friends to fill an empty void. They may also develop imaginary friends as company. Um, kids who are bullied and have low social skills or poor social skills also may develop imaginary friends or um, symptoms and peculiar, peculiar, excuse me, peculiar. I can't speak today. Peculiar. Okay. I know somebody's going to comment in the comment section and be like, really, Tamara? Um, you need some rest, girl. Um, but yes, these kind of kids do show um, odd and peculiar behaviors. And um, these kind of kids are not psychotic. They might just need a lot of help. So we're going to continue this conversation. I don't want to make this video too long, but we're going to continue this conversation as we look at family dynamics, because this week we're going to start talking about family mental health. And I think that's an important topic. All right, guys, if this video was helpful to you, please hit the thumbs up button. I thank you for that. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's over here. Uh, that way you can keep up with the videos that I will be posting this week and other weeks. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start our, our topic now that November is coming soon um, about family. And in those videos, we're gonna be talking about holidays and dealing with mental illness over the holidays and dealing with family members who are problematic. And I wanna teach you about the um, trauma, drama, triangle. I think you're going to love that. So stick around for this video, guys. Um, in the meantime, I will prepare to give a bonus video on Wednesday um, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.